start it once again. Hello, everybody who has joined us recently. My name is Natalia Mohnenko. I'm a methodologist, teacher trainer at the Internal Education, and I am the one who works in Odessa office. And you know, today is uh, the 1st of September, and it's a big holiday, I'm sure, for all the teachers. And as I'm a teacher too, Mm, it's a holiday for me as well, and you know, mm, I'm going to celebrate it somehow. What about you? Are you going to celebrate the first of September? Put a plus if you have uh, some plans for the evening. Oh, Ivana has got some plans. And uh, Solomia as well. Okay, so I see many pluses. No. Okay, making pizza is a good idea, yeah, to start to start the new school year. I'm celebrating by teaching. It's also good, you know? Okay, so teachers are going to celebrate the beginning of the new school year, and you know, I'm going to do it too in a very special way. I'm going uh, not to eat pizza, I'm going to watch uh, my favorite movie, because you know, it seems to me it's the last evening uh, when I have free time to, to watch the film, because uh, tomorrow my son will be back from school and you know what I mean, home task, checking, helping and all this stuff. So today I'm going to watch one of my favorite movies. Okay, so can you guess what my favorite movie is? You can see the screenshot from it. So any ideas what women want? Yes, Irina, you're absolutely right. Yeah, so what women want, that is the movie which I love watching, right, with Mel Gibson. And you know, the movie is pretty old, but anyway, I love watching it again and again. And very often, you know, when I watch uh, mm, uh, the movie, I ask myself, okay, uh, what do women want? And of course, I can presume what we want, right? And then I start uh, thinking about uh, teachers. Because, you know, teachers are really unique people, yeah? And I start thinking, okay, what do English teachers want? Okay, any ideas from you, my dear participant? More freedom, okay, teachers want more freedom. Well, you know, it's the beginning of this new school year, so let's make some new year resolutions. What do we want? Excellent students, right, to be better as teachers and people. Yes, we always want to improve ourselves, involve students, diligent students. Yeah, very nice ideas. Okay, what else do we want? What a vacation, really? Well, we had three month vacation. I believe it's enough. Okay, more time, I agree more free time to get more inspiration exactly yeah to to be a motivated teacher yeah you, you you should have some free leisure time yeah to get that inspiration less paperwork oh i agree and good money for our work yeah teachers get decent salaries i agree with you 100 percent interest in textbooks yeah so a lot of a lot of ideas and you know i absolutely agree with all of you so to have a small sum up yeah all of us want to have i know excellent students right the ones who always do their home tasks the ones who behave themselves in the classroom the ones who always raise their hands of course we understand that it's uh, well it's almost unlikely yeah because all the children are different and they can't be perfect all of them can't be perfect but anyway every year we start working with the, a new group of students we hope yeah that they will be hard working responsible and stuff like that of course we want as you mentioned yeah we want some time for professional development right to attend webinars like the one we are doing today yeah maybe to attend uh, seminars offline seminars and let's put our fingers crossed and let's hope that in the nearest future we will have a chance to meet you 
offline. And of course, I'm sure many of you think that it's a great idea. One of our wishes is, well, to have a photocopier which doesn't break down the last moment before the test. Yeah, when we have to make, I know, 45 I know, copies of the test, but unfortunately, yeah, the machine isn't working. Sorry about that. Well, so these are our dreams. These are the things which we want. Of course, thank you, Olena, for reminding us about strong health. Yeah, it's immensely important for everybody. But I'm sure that uh, apart from uh, diligent students and ability to, to grow professionally, right, we also want to have that perfect resource. Yeah, the book which is comfortable to work with, which is easy to, to follow, yeah, the one which we can open and teach. So again, I've got a question to you. What is your idea of a perfect English book? Just one or two words. So a perfect English book is, okay, I see some people typing. Interesting, yeah, it's important, yeah, the book should be appealing both to teachers and students. Minimal preparation, yeah, Tatiana, I agree with you 100%, and you know, it's really good when the book is easy to understand, when it's clear, yeah, you open and you see where the beginning of the lesson is, where the end is. Combination of good grammar and vocab, yeah, it's important, I agree. Extra materials, yeah. Photocopyables are important when you have a few minutes left at the very end of the, of the lesson or when you want to practice some grammar topics a little bit more. Okay, a lot of activities. Yeah, I agree with you when students yeah, have the balance of heads down, heads up activities, yeah, when they never get bored by working. Clear and well structures, exactly. Motivating, right? Interesting text, pictures, grammar, listening, yeah. So it perfect resource, it's a combination of everything which saves teachers time. Very nice summary. Thank you very much for your ideas. All of them are absolutely, absolutely correct. Well, and you know, today I'm going to talk about such a resource, uh, the book uh, which is called Next Move, right? Uh, the book uh, which has four levels and the book uh, which is recommended to be used in lower secondary sectors. I mean grades from the fifth till the eighth. So, uh, do we have many next new users among our participants? Can you just put a plus if you are going to use next move this year? Or maybe you used it before? Let's see if we have many next new users. Yeah, okay. I see some pluses. Okay, Oksana is right, and I wish so many, Oksana, uh, after watching this webinar, yeah, you will have that desire to buy and try the book with your students. Okay, so I see that we have many next move users, which is, which is great. Okay, so very often uh, when, we, when, we are, when we choose the book, yeah, what do we usually look at? We know that all aspects are important, but anyway, there are some things which are which are more important for us, uh, the teachers. And I don't know why, but uh, having analyzed uh, our market and the way uh, our teachers uh, choose the books, I can say the following. First of all, our teachers usually look at grammar section. Yeah, when they open these content pages, yeah, they the first thing they look at is grammar. Like what tenses are introduced? Well, present simple, present continuous. Okay, let it be, past simple, not bad, and so on and so forth. We always analyze grammar to make sure that uh, the grammar topics covered in the books yeah, correspond to the requirements of our ministry yeah, and these ministry programs uh, all of us <laughs> know about. So grammar goes fast. I don't know why, but that is true. Then the next is vocabulary. Yeah, right. Well, we look through 
related to all this yet, to make sure they are interesting, to make sure they are relevant for the age of uh, our students, because we understand that, uh, for example, this is next move two, and it works well in the sixth form. And I understand that in the sixth form, when the kids are 12, yeah, they can talk about music, appearance, uh, breaking the rules, but they are not ready to talk about globalization or, I don't know, um, environmental issues or stuff like that. Yeah. So we see whether vocabulary is relevant for their age, whether they can, whether they can comment right on some topics using using the vocab. Okay, and of course, the last but not the least, it's reading. Yeah, we always um, I know look at the text, the topics. Yes, of the text. Uh, thank you, Natalia. Uh, because, yeah, we understand that if the text is boring, if uh, the information given in the text is out of date, modern kids won't read it. Yeah, they, they might read it because we will make them read it. Yeah, but it won't be interesting and there will be zero motivation for them uh, to do the reading text. That is why the topics which are covered in reading texts, yeah, in reading exercises should be interesting. Okay, Anna is asking, what about listening? You know, very often when we just have a fast look at the book, uh, we don't have a chance to listen to audio. Do you agree with me? Yeah, because, well, it's, it's impossible to do it when you are in a shop, yeah, having a look at the book. But of course, when we are at home, we can go through um, a listening as well. So today, actually, we are going to, to look at these three options. I mean, vocabulary, grammar, and reading. Yeah, but I will tell you a little bit more. So let's get started. Uh, as an example, I decided to use uh, the materials from Next Move 2, which works well in the sixth form. So could you remind me how old our pupils are in the sixth form? Yeah, right you are, they are 11 or 12. So while looking through the tasks, yeah, keep in mind that these are the activities for the kids who are 11 or 12. And, you know, for uh, my first example, I have chosen uh, the very first unit uh, from Next Move 2, and it's a reading lesson, right? So it's the very first reading lesson in September. So, could you again, could you remind me what uh, the typical stages of the reading lesson are? When we write the plan for our reading lesson, yeah, what stages do we always keep in mind? Like, we should start with PPP. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, pre while after reading task. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. When we, uh, when we plan our reading lesson, yeah, we always remember about these three logical stages. It's pre-reading, while reading, and after reading. Yeah, it's a formula we should stick to when we plan and when we are going to teach a reading lesson. Okay, so of course, uh, when I open the book, first of all, I look at the text. Yeah, pretty nice text about the Olympic Games. But you know, the reading lesson, it's not only about the text. Yeah, I keep in mind that I should stick to these three stages. So I look at the very first task. Yeah, look at the photos. Which one shows the Olympic flag, the Olympic torch, the opening ceremony? So I understand that these are three questions and it's a pre-reading stage. Yeah, where students actually can answer the questions and show me what they know about Olympics. Yeah, so I kind of elicit the information from them, yeah, to see what they know what they might not know and it's pretty comfortable yeah so they so we start talking about olympics and after that yeah we will move to the text then i look at the second task right which says 
read the magazine article, answer the question. Okay, I understand that it's a very nice while reading activity. Yeah, so my students will read the text and having read it, yeah, they will discuss the questions also. Pay special attention that uh, the text's next move can be not only read, but also listened to, which also gives me a chance, a choice, sorry. So if I have a wiki group, yeah, we can do the task as reading. If I have a strong group and I know that uh, reading is pretty easy for them, I can do the activity as listening. Yeah, I can ask them to close the books and to listen to the story about Olympics. Why not? The book gives me such a such an opportunity. Why not to use it? Okay, so it's a nice while reading activity here yeah, when they ask and answer the questions. And then we have these task number three. What about you? In pairs, ask and answer. Yeah, and here we have a few questions about, again, about only X. Yeah, so the questions the students can answer after reading the text, plus adding some general knowledge they have. So we can have a nice open class discussion after reading the text. So that is my reading lesson, yeah, which is logically built, yeah, which covers all three stages. So I understand, yeah, having a look at the picture, yeah, at the page, we understand that my lesson will be interesting and productive. Okay, so if we get back to the text, and let's analyze the vocabulary with you. Look, archery, athletics, gymnastics, football, and basketball. So, what do you think? What vocabulary is recycled and practiced in the text? Your ideas? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're absolutely right. So, uh, sports vocabulary, yeah is <clears throat> recycled in the text. What does it mean? It means that the lesson which precedes the reading lesson is vocabulary. You know, every single unit in next move, no matter what level of book it is, starts with vocabulary input. And you know, I love it. Yeah, we have the topic of the unit, and the unit starts with vocabulary input, which means that if my students have forgotten the vocab, yeah, if they don't know it, it's a great chance for them to enrich their knowledge of topic vocabulary. And later on, while doing reading, grammar, I know, listening, yeah, they will practice this vocab again and again. And of course, they will use this vocab while discussing different topics. And again, looking at a vocabulary page, I can see really bright pictures which are used for uh, introduction, yet yeah, to introduce the meaning of the words, right? Like swimming or basketball or skateboarding, whatever. Then the students are asked to listen, yeah? And then to, to have a look at the way the words are written, yeah? Well, so the vocabulary is presented in a nice, logical way. Now, let's have a look at exercise three. Look, the students are asked to divide the sports, yeah, they have learned, into three different categories. The ones which go with play, the ones which collocate with go, and the ones which collocate with do. I believe it's really essential. Why? Because it's important not only to know the names of different types of sports, yeah, but it's really important to know the verbs they are used to. Because, you know, for Ukrainian students, займатися дюдо і займатися плаванням, да, ми використовуємо один і той же, одне і теж діє слово. But we should explain that in English, займатися дюдо is do judo, but it's 
go swimming. Yeah, so they should understand it from the very first lesson. Yeah, and they should remember which verbs to use which with which types of sport. Yeah, not to make mistakes in the future. Well, so the students divide the verbs into three categories here, yeah, and then they have a very nice exercise to practice. Yeah, so they just complete the gaps, yeah, putting uh, play, go or do into the sentences. So look, have, uh, <laughs> going back to our vocabulary page, yeah, we don't just present the meaning and the words themselves, yeah, we also show them how to use these kinds of sport correctly. Well, and you know, of course, I can easily plan my lesson just looking at this page because it's pretty clear, yeah, it's open and teach approach, which is used in the book, but why? Why should I? Yeah, I always remember that, uh, uh, well, my spare time goes fast. That is why I need to use a teacher's you know, uh, I would say that uh, next book has one of the best teacher's books. And now I will show you why I'm so sure about that. So I open the page, the corresponding page, right? And what do I see? First of all, as it is the beginning of a new unit, yes, yeah, so I see the unit contents, yeah? So... I can easily note that, well, the grammar which is covered is present simple, verbs plus ing, adverbs of frequency. Uh -huh. So I understand that my main focus of attention will be on present simple yeah, and adverbs of frequency. Also, I can see what vocabulary mm, is covered here, yeah, communication topics and key competences, which is very important yeah, in our modern school. And again, then I see a very, very detailed plan, yeah, step by step plan of my lesson. And what is more, yeah, I see some extra activities like look, books closed in pairs or small groups, students brainstorm sports activities. Very good reminder that before I teach new vocab, I should elicit yeah, what they already know. They change partners or groups and teaches each other the vocabulary. Very good idea. Yeah, why should I teach them? Of course, I will teach them. Yeah, but before I do that, well, let's give them the chance to do that on their own. Yeah, and to increase their students' talking time and to increase their self-confidence that, look, we know a lot of vocab. Very nice extra activity, which I can definitely use at the beginning of my class. And there is one more, how to finish the lesson, right? If I have, for example, two minutes left at the very end. Okay, so let's have a look what it says. Reinforce vocabulary and spelling by doing a group mime activity at this point. So the students are asked to mime different kinds of sport. Great activity, yeah, to wrap up our class with. So you see, not only step-by-step -step instructions, how to, to, to follow the student yeah, from one activity to another, but also some additional activities, yeah, which I can do if I have time, which I can skip if I don't have that time. Well. So let's get back to our reading lesson. So now we know yeah, that uh, the, the lesson which precedes the reading lesson is vocabulary. And uh, logically, yeah, I can think, okay, how to start my reading lesson next day? Should I start with that discussion or what can I do? Your ideas. If the previous lesson was vocab and now it's reading. So what can I do at the beginning of the reading lesson? Yeah, many people are writing. Uh, thank you, Natalia. You are the first. Yeah, of course, it makes sense to revise the vocab. So now let's do it together with you. So we are going to revise sports vocab. I'm going to show you a table yeah, with three verbs. Play, go, 
and do. So you are going to see different kinds of sport on the screen and your task is to write a verb this type of sport collocates with. For example, I say kirati and you write do, exactly. Okay, so let's revise sports vocab. Athletics. Mm -hmm. Okay, many people are typing do. Yeah, well done. You're absolutely right. We do athletics. Basketball. Okay, Tatiana was the first one. Yeah, all of you are absolutely right saying that we play basketball. Okay, are you ready for the for one more word? Skating. Okay, it's easy, I believe. Yeah, go skating. Yeah, so a pretty simple activity, yeah, but it will help your students, yeah, to remember the words. And, you know, it's a very nice categorization dictation. Uh, what do I mean? They not only write the words, yeah? Okay, actually, you know, these words are pretty universal. They are international, yeah, and basketball. If I tell them in Ukrainian basketball, they will definitely know that bas it's basketball in English. But here, the task is a little bit challenging because not only do they remember the spelling of basketball, yeah, they also should remember the verb basketball collocates with. So it's a kind of challenging task, a little bit more challenging than just a simple dictation. And again, and again, look, I wasn't the author of this activity. I took the idea from the teacher's book. Yeah, it's a revision stage of our reading lesson. And you know what I personally love about the instructions which are given in the teacher's book? They are very, very detailed. Like every step of the activity is described in details. Just have a look. At the start of the class, revise the use of play, go, and do. Yes, so have a short revision. Remind them yeah, that sports can collocate with different verbs. Tell students they are you are going to say 10 sports and they must write them in the correct column. Yeah, it's important to mention. Okay, what is more? Look, we here we have information how they can evaluate themselves. They will get half a point for the correct column and further half a point for the correct spelling. You know, it's very important to mention that, look, not only categorization is important, spelling is essential as well. And also, students correct their own work and give themselves a mark out of 10. Okay, so you see, it's not just like do that with your students, yeah, but a very nice step-by-step -step description how to set up, yeah, and how to lead the activity. That is what I love about Next Move Teachers. Okay, let's get back to our text. So now we know that uh, it sports vocabulary, which is recycled in the text, but let's have a closer look at grammar, which is used here. Okay, they take place every four years. Athletes from five countries take part in many sports. The torch visits many countries. So again, could you help me? Uh, what tense is used in most sentences? Yeah, 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 you are absolutely right. It's present simple. So now we can easily guess that the lesson which follows the reading one is grammar lesson. You see, the book is built really logically. Right? And again, when you start your grammar lesson, you can get back to the reading text, right? And use it as the introduction to grammar, if you have time. If not, it's not a problem. But anyway, the text, yeah, it's used to present the meaning of present simple. So, let's have a closer look at our grammar page. 
festival, we have very clear tables, yeah, with examples. And it's really great. Why? Because it's important for kids, right, to understand how to make, for example, a positive sentence in present simple, a negative sentence, a question. And uh, believe me, it's also important for parents. Well, whether we like it or not, parents help their kids with their home tasks. And even if they uh, don't remember everything, I mean, all the tenses in English, yeah, they can have a look at this table, yeah, to refresh their memories about present simple and help their kids, yeah, with the home tasks. So the table is pretty clear, compact, yeah, and easy to understand. Okay, what do we always love? We always love when we have a lot of exercises, right, to practice grammar. Because the more we practice, the better they understand and remember mm, the grammar form. Yeah, practice makes it perfect. So let's see what next move offers us. Well, the first two exercises of controlled practice are pretty simple, I would say, right? So they complete the gaps using the verbs given in the box. Yeah, task two is about positive sentences only, yeah, which is very good. Yeah, they start with simple task, with simple manageable task, I would say. Uh, task three, again, it's controlled practice, right? But here they are asked to make negative sentences, yeah? Pretty important here. Yeah, we like football, we don't like football. He eats ice cream, he doesn't eat ice cream. Yeah, six sentences to practice don't, doesn't. Okay, if we move further, yeah, we'll see that tasks four and five are a little bit more complicated. Yeah, task four is about questions, making questions, yeah? And look, it's not just to put in do or does before the subject, right? It's we have the words and they have to put them in the correct order, right? To make questions and to remember as auxiliary verbs. Task five, I would say, is the hardest one because here they should open the brackets, yeah, and put the verbs in the correct forms. And here we have the mix of affirmative sentences, interrogative sentences, negative sentences, right? So everything to practice everything they have learned during our grammar lesson. And again, let's see what our assistant teacher's book suggests. Oh, before, before the teacher's book, yeah, let's have a look at one more important thing. Look, we do judo. They love skateboarding. We like football. He plays tennis. Yeah, so the same vocabulary is practiced in grammar exercises as well. So the sentences, yeah, are on the topic which is being learned in this particular unit. So the students are exposed to new vocab again and again. So let's uh, see what the teacher's book offers us. So of course, we have that detailed lesson plan, how to teach present simple, yeah? And look, language no, very important. Third person singular verbs are pronounced with s, z, or even is. Yeah, well, very often we don't have enough time to practice pronunciation, especially when we talk about grammar. And I don't know, but pretty often it happens so that we skip that pronunciation box. But uh, we understand that it's essential, right? Because native speakers, when they make a sentence in present simple, yeah, and when they add that S, they pronounce it differently. And we, if we want to sound natural, if we want to sound fluent, we should do the same. So when you have grammar lessons, yeah, remember about pronunciation as well. And then here in our grammar lesson, we have one more extra activity if we have time, yeah, to practice these s, z, is endings with our students. Yeah, so if we have time, yeah, we can easily do it. 
Well, so we have had a look at two components of uh, Next Move. It's Next Move students' book, right? The book which is used by students during the lessons, yeah? Also, I've shown you the teacher's book, uh, how nice it is. But when we talk about uh, like the books, yeah, we usually use, right, with our students, there is one more book missing. So can you guess what it is? Yeah, and Irina Nikolaenko is the best. Yeah, you're absolutely right. When we talk about authentic resources, data, wider world, or focus, or even fly high, yeah, we always remember about the world book. Yeah, the book which students use at home to, to practice uh, what has been what has been learned during the lesson. And of course, it won't be a big surprise uh, for you that in uh, next month we have a very nice uh, workbook. Yes, and for every page in the student's book, for example, vocabulary page in the student's book, yeah, we have a corresponding page in the workbook. Yes, yeah, so it's about vocab, and here we have, we do reading in the classroom, they practice reading at home. Yeah, the same happens with grammar. So you might say, okay, nothing special. But, but have a look, have a closer look at these small stars. As you see, the tasks uh, in the workbook, next more workbook, uh, are of different levels of difficulty. So, uh, the first two tasks are uh, usually with one star. Yeah, so let's have a closer look at them. So it means that they are really simple. Yeah, just choose between two words. Yeah, play or place. James, play or place basketball. So almost no writing, right? Just focus is on the form. Yeah, the student's task is to choose the form with S or without S. Well, why, why am I focusing your attention on that? You know, my son uh, works with this book and he's been working with it for, for two years and he, he's going to start using Next Move 3. And while uh, doing the home task together with him, while assisting him on his home task, yeah, I always see that these tasks, I mean the first ones, are done with great pleasure because look, wow, I can do it. Yeah, so if, look, if the first task, the very first task is complicated, okay, the student starts doing the task, okay, one sentence, no idea. Sentence two, I have no idea. And then he or she just throws the book away and says, sorry, I know nothing. I cannot do that. But, you know, when the tasks are a little bit simpler, right well they feel encouraged they say I, I look at him and i see that he's really excited about doing the task because he knows what he's doing right play or place okay easy does doesn't or don't yeah let's if you don't remember let's have a look at the box grammar box so these simple tasks yeah, they motivate, yeah, and their self-esteem gets better. They believe in themselves. They know that they understand. Present simple, right, thank you very much. Uh, tasks three and four are a little bit more challenging. Yeah, this time they have, for example, open the brackets, yes, and write the correct form, don't, doesn't, press or without s. Yeah, so it's like the next step of difficulty. But again, having done the previous one, you can always have a look, right? And tasks three and four won't be that complicated. And task five with three stars is uh, the most challenging one, right? Here we have a lawn and text where they have to open the brackets, yes, and put the verbs into correct forms, whether it is negative or maybe interrogative or affirmative. So it's a kind of a summary, right, of everything they have practiced. So if we talk about students, it's personal comfort. Yeah, it's a very nice idea. They feel self-confident. It boosts their self-esteem. They believe that they can cope with the tasks. For us, the teachers, it's also a great chance. Yeah, because if we have mixed ability class and we know that we have a few students who are really weak 
and they will never prove with task five. Yeah, we can ask them to do tasks one, two, maybe three and four. That's it, and it's absolutely okay. Right, so next move is also about teaching mixed ability classes. Okay, and you know, uh, next next move uh, workbook is also unique. Why? Because at the very end, we have these colorful pages. So what do we have here? First of all, we have grammar references. Again, all the grammar topics, yeah, are uh, at the very end of the workbook. So again, if you want to have some revision before the test, I don't know, at the end of the unit, uh, at the end of the term, yeah, you can easily go to, to these pages. Also, you know, um, some teachers have three lessons per week, some teachers have five lessons per week. So if you have that extra lesson and you want to practice uh, grammar a little bit more, you don't need to waste your time looking for some tasks online. Yeah, of course, Google can always help us, but anyway, it takes time. Try to do that. You open these extra pages at the very end of next new workbook, and here we have additional tasks which can be easily used yeah, whenever we want. So we have grammar reference for every unit. Yes, with additional grammar practice, right? And of course, vocabulary. My son loves these vocabulary pages because here uh, they have all the vocab which has been learned during the unit. It's a kind of summary lesson. Yeah, they can easily write the translation of the words given. They can write the definition, whatever. And as you see, uh, there is also the section vocabulary extension, yeah, where they learn at least five or four new words, which is good, and they love it. And we know that uh, learning English, it's not only about grammar and vocabulary, it's also speaking and listening, which is essential for our students. So again, in next new workbook, we have additional speaking and listening activities to practice functional language and to practice listening as well. And again, these additional pages are for every single for every single unit. Well, so to sum up, I can say that next more workbook, it's 58 pages of practice. Yeah, they are black and white. Yeah, the tasks are of different level uh, of uh, difficulty, but we have plus 40 pages of additional practice. And again, it's up to you. You can use these additional pages to, uh, to do the exercises during the lesson. You can use these pages to, I don't know, to ask the students to do the home task. So you decide, yeah, how to use these additional practice pages. Well, and uh, so uh, to sum up, if I had to describe uh, next move, each component of next move with one word, I would say that next move students book is unity. As you could see, yes, all the lessons are logically united. Yeah, we introduce vocab, then the vocab is recycled in reading, then the reading text is used to demonstrate the meaning of some grammar structures, and then we will have one more vocabulary lesson, yeah, which adds to the first uh, vocabulary. So all the units, all the information is uh, logically ignited, and the information is recycled again and again and again. Well, uh, teacher's book, yeah, it's my favorite, I would say. So it's a perfect assistance. Yeah, lots and lots of extra ideas, a lot of language notes. So, for example, if I, can, if I have no clue uh, about Olympics, yeah, the information is in the teacher's book and I can learn something interesting about Olympics or about some uh, famous painters or authors who are mentioned in the book and, you know, not always we know all the information. So, everything is in Next Move teacher's book. And next new workbook, yeah, of course, it's practice. 
a lot of practice, yeah, different levels of complexity. Well, um, one star, two stars, three stars, you choose. Yeah, a lot of exercises to practice what has been learned during the lesson. And well, so unity, practice, assistance, yeah, three words, well, which I believe describe next move the best. And when we talk about components, actually, here we have two ways. Yeah, we can choose a classical way of work. Yeah, when we, we use paper student's book, paper workbook, and also students have a CD disk in the workbook. Because, uh, you know, in next move, they practice listening not only during the lessons, there are special listening lessons in the workbook as well. So they have a separate CD, which they can use at home while doing some home tasks. Also, now, remember that, okay, we have started the new school year today, right? But we never know. And we can also choose a blended learning. It's when students have a paper, students book, but they don't use the paper workbook to do the home task. They use my English lab. Yeah, to do the exercises. It's a kind of interactive copy book. Yeah, which allows the students to do the home tasks. Yeah, on their computers and the program. I mean, my English lab checks everything and the teacher gets the results. And I know that many people started using mail with next move in screen by the way uh, what about you i mean my dear participants are there any male next move male users among us yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know uh, again my son started using mail uh, last spring when the quarantine started and what could i see i saw that he was really excited about it he loved doing exercises online. He loved uh, the possibility to see the correct answers, yeah, to see the mistakes, to correct the mistakes. Yeah. So mail is loved by students. It's for sure. And when we speak about teachers, of course, it's not only students' book and workbook. Yeah, you might need it's a teacher's book, plus it's um, active teach. I mean, the materials which you can use uh, on the whiteboard if you've got one in the classroom, and of course, class audio series. Okay, so that's it about next move. Yeah, дуже дякую вам за увагу. Я дякую вам за приємні приємні коментарі, що ви користуєтеся підручником, так і він вам дійсно подобається, це приємно чути, ресурс дійсно е, класний, я знаю його як вчитель, який працював з ним, я знаю його як мама учня, який працює з ним не перший рік, я можу